What's up, Visual fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Back with me, Rocky Padilla, and this is probably the most anticipated interview since we won the gold medal. Yes, we are here with the one and only Marquise Bolden. Marquise, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me, too. Man, thank, you. thank you for taking your time. Thank you so much for the idea. <laughs> we didn't do it in practice. We're staying here. But Marquise... That let us know, man, how happy are you, you know, to be able to help our national team winning the gold medal. And I saw you singing our national anthem on stage course, with the gold yeah. medal. <laughs> yes. How happy are you, man, to be able to help our national team uh, making history? Um, no, seriously. I mean, it's amazing mm -hmm. um, just to be able to accomplish something um, that hasn't been done before uh, at the SEA Games level. And um, just honestly getting close with the group of guys that we have and seeing how bad... Uh, we all wanted to come together and win it. Uh, it was really special for us. And you were in foul trouble since the third quarter. And 30, 30, you tried though. You tried 30. <laughs> but uh, you were able to stay. Did you tell coach that you want to stay on the court? And how were you able to stay on the court and stay aggressive? Um, it was just more so being smart. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, Philippines, I mean, they're unlike any other team that was in the SEA Games. Very aggressive. Uh, a big team too so it was uh just very very important for me to stay smart and try not to commit like any dumb fouls that, that would take me out and of course you were involved probably in the biggest the last the biggest three possession at the end first of all you had to put back on Agassiz miss and then you and Brom you and Abraham stopped Matthew Wright and of course the last one was the two clutch free throws just what went through your mind though during those free throws because you know we almost made history that time yeah i mean uh you just can't think about uh how big the picture is i mean i've shot i don't know probably thousands of, of mm -hmm. free throws since i've been playing basketball mm -hmm. and um we worked really hard for this moment so i know a lot was on the line and uh you know we had the whole country rooting for us but um i just try not to think about everything like that you just kind of keep it simple mm -hmm. and uh Keep it simple. It's just making two free throws, and so that's that's what we was able to do. And Marquis, Brom had two big free throws too. Oh yeah, he yeah. did. He did actually. Yeah, shout out, and he got a big three too on big the corner. Two in, in the, the corner. corner. Yeah, right. no, that was. We needed that. Yeah, we needed that. and you were all you played uh, in the last game. Like, how hard were you? How hard was it for you to like you know get acclimated to everything? Because I know you missed the f uh, first five games, and you didn't have a lot of time with the guys. Also, so you just they put it. They put you in in the finals, and how hard was it for you to get acclimated with the system and everything? Um, I mean, I've been here uh, mm -hmm. prepping for about a month, month and a half before. So, I mean, I was pretty comfortable with the guys on the team. Mm -hmm. um, as far as knowing all the plays, knowing where to be on the court, uh, that was that was it. Came kind of natural to me just because mm -hmm. of training camp and everything. So, the only thing I really missed uh, up until that point was those first couple mm -hmm. of games, and so. Um, I didn't really miss too much time, but but now nah, it was fun being able to compete in such a high level game like that. I know you were uh, cheering for our guys in the first five games, and you know you give a lot of support to our local players. And you've been around the team for a while now. Uh, what stood out to you about our about our local players? Um, just the fight that we had, because mm -hmm. um, you know coming coming uh, mm -hmm. from where I was from is you don't really know what to expect, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, you kind of just know that all you know is that the Philippines have won for, you know, the last decade or whatever. So um, just seeing the fight that we had, seeing how big our heart was and how bad we wanted to win was uh, something that really stood out to me. And let's talk about Wado, man. That huge <laughs> third quarter, man. You know, we were down by six points and then Wado hit one, Juan Lauren hit one, and then Wado... Hit another, uh, hit two another, uh, two uh, another three point shots. I'm sorry, but yeah, but hey, what about Wado, man? What about that performance in the last game? I mean, he's an experienced player, mm -hmm. so you know you kind of expect that from a professional like Wado. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, I mean, I can't really say enough about him just with how he conducts himself, kind of mm -hmm. on and off the court. So I'm glad to have him as my teammate. And of course, Derek made a big impact with this team. Still 19, yeah. uh, had no experience in international level. This is his first tournament, uh, other than he played like two minutes in a FIBA Asia game. But uh, just how proud are you, though, you know, to be playing with Derek Michael in this tournament? Uh, Derek Michael was the MVP yeah. of the SEA Games. Mm -hmm. he, was, um, he was incredible throughout the whole six games. I mean, to 
be able to play from a high level like that from start to finish, um, only getting really one day of rest. Yeah. And then he was playing a center position too. It's uh, You can't really say enough about how well he did and uh, how much he stepped up for the whole group. So he was... He was a very important part of uh, of making history. Yes, he stepped up big time for our Nationals here, and he gonna go to GCU Grand Canyon University yeah. next season playing D1 basketball. Yes, if you can give him advice on playing D1, what would you give him? Um, just to really stay focused and try to keep uh, keep everything simple, because you mm -hmm. know it's we got social media, mm -hmm. we got you know NIL, like it's yes. it's so many things that that can kind of attach to basketball, but necessarily like don't really matter as much. So as long as he just keeps the main thing, the main thing, which is you know making sure he's healthy, making mm -hmm. sure uh, his game is right, and everything like that, like he'll be just fine. Can Derek make it to NBA G League? This is the big question because we know you got experience playing in the G League. You know the level, how to get there. Do you think Derek will get a chance? No, no pressure to Derek. <laughs> no pressure to Derek. But do you think Derek got a chance or a shot to go to NBA G League? Uh, NBA G League. I mean, I have experience in NBA yeah. and G League, but mm -hmm. um, now nah, Derek has a chance to make it higher than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he. Like he's only 19, um, and all he does, I mean, all he has is room to grow. And so just seeing uh, the competitive fire that he really plays with, I feel like the sky is the limit. So, yeah, the G League is, is one level and it's one goal, but no, I feel like Derek can definitely be a professional, like on the NBA level. I would like to say NBA, but I don't want to put too much pressure on Derek, you know. <laughs> but I think I th I've been I've been telling Derek to take it day by day, you know. Uh, I'm I'm sure that he has the potential to go to the NBA, but sometimes I don't want to put too much pressure on him. But let's go let's go back to you uh, for a minute. Um, you actually play for a bit against Vietnam, but I would like just to know uh, your feelings though, putting on the Indonesian national team jersey for the first time. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of had, like, an idea of what it was going to feel mm -hmm. like, just representing the country and, and knowing uh, how many people and, and how many things I was playing for. But uh, it's just I can't really describe the feeling yeah. once you're in the game. Like, you're in the game. You got that jersey on. You got – we were in Vietnam this time. So you got, you know, all the Vietnam fans mm -hmm. going crazy and everything. So, now it was an amazing feeling just to be able to come out and uh, – represent the country especially with you know the teammates that i have and this is your first experience playing southeast asian basketball uh how was just your overall experience and what do you think about the level of basketball in southeast asia uh, it was good it was really good i mean um again like you said it was my first time i didn't really like have any idea what to expect so i went into it with an open mind but uh no you could definitely tell like it's, it's very competitive around the world so um Yeah, no, the tournament was very competitive, and uh, I'm glad we were just able to pull through. And, of course, uh, let's look back. Uh, when Indonesia first time contacted you about uh, their interest of naturalizing you, what was your first reaction, though, when you heard about this? Um, obviously, I had to think about it because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a 24-hour flight. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's soil that you've never been on before, so... Mm -hmm. Being able to um, have a country just, you know, welcome you with, with such open arms like mm -hmm. Indonesia did, uh, I mean, it was amazing. But the my first thoughts was just like, like, that's what you play basketball for. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I play, obviously, because I love the game, but I play to represent things as well. And so when you give me the opportunity to represent something as huge as a country, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of hard of an offer to turn down. So that was, I would probably ask you, that was your biggest yes factor to come in and help the Indonesian national team? Uh, my biggest factor, uh, yeah, was, uh, just, was just the stage that it was going to mm -hmm. be on. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, anything uh, that wasn't really mm -hmm. too important. I mean, you're playing in, in one, of the, one of the best countries in Asia. And so um, being able to represent it, you know, especially doing something you love at the yeah. same time, yeah, no, it, it was pretty cool to do. And what I know, we're still in a very early stage of your Indonesian <laughs> national team career. But I just would like to know, like, what kind of legacy you want to leave for Indonesian basketball? Um, hmm. mm -hmm. I really want to raise the higher importance of basketball in Indonesia. Okay. Um, you know, obviously, we've had our struggles. We had our ups and downs as a country uh, on the basketball side. You know, um, badminton, like... Mm -hmm. 
wushu, football, like they're all sports that we do really well at. But um, I just want to leave some type of legacy to where like, you know, basketball is one of the main sports in Indonesia too. And so uh, that's just what I'm kind of looking to bring. And um, this is your first time, right, in Southeast Asia. Before, before uh, I know you came here, I think, once for your naturalize, uh, naturalization. But uh, mostly, all these things are new with you, uh, to you. But I would like to know, what was your biggest adjustment, though, coming to Indonesia? Um, the biggest adjustment, I would say, is... Mm. Huh. Mm. I would probably say... Honestly, the the language. I okay. feel like Bahasa in like Indonesian terms is um, something I'm a- adapting to. Uh-huh. Like it's like an everyday thing to where I'm learning more and more mm-hmm. each day. But um, you know, the food is great. The people are, are amazing. Um, the city of Jakarta is like it's it's a really easy city to live in. It's a uh, it's a lot of nice people and a lot of things to do. So I probably say the one thing that kind of trips me up a little yeah. bit it's just like you know the, the bahasa so I, i'm learning though i'm La- learning let's hear it bro <laughs> <laughs> give me some man give me some. okay so we got some uh some pagi okay yes yeah, it's not bad yeah not but see i got a little tongue a little bit so <laughs> oh, okay right. that's what i was to ask you three makasi so yeah three three makasi. Makasi. yeah summer summer i got it I got a couple in me. I'm not just, I'm not too foreign, but yeah. I'm not, you know. Hey, it's a start. It's, yeah, a, it's start. a start. Yeah, you gotta no. start somewhere. You gotta, you gotta start, start somewhere. somewhere. That's true. So uh, now we are heading to FIBA Asia. Um, yeah, what kind of your, uh, what kind of ex- expectation do you have? You um, and we are hoping that we can qualify for the FIBA World Cup. Um, how much expectation do you have from your teammates and for the national team as well? Um, I mean, we have high expectations. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we've did something uh, already this summer mm-hmm. that has never been done before. So, for us to kind of just keep the ball rolling, mm-hmm. uh, keep the momentum going, and and really just stay focused, like mm-hmm. not kind of get too high or too low, uh, would probably be the main thing. So now we definitely have high expectations, and uh, we we definitely shooting to to qualify for the World Cup. Yes, and what would like. You, uh, what would like? Man, I can't even speak English right now today. Man, I don't even know why I cannot speak English because probably I got Marquis next to me. But Marquis, what do you want to see the national team improve on before the FIBA World, uh, FIBA Asia? Um, what do I want to see us improve yeah. on? Um, I would probably just say. I mean, I've, granted, I've only played two games. Yes. Well, one game, really. <laughs> I played a little bit in the Vietnam game. But, but you see a lot, though, from the sidelines, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah, what's you? I, <laughs> um, I would probably say playing all four quarters because mm-hmm. um, we make really good runs, and then we expect teams to you kind, of, kind of lay down. Mm-hmm. So uh, so I'll probably say, like, the the Malaysia game was a good example. Mm-hmm. Um, we, had, we got out to a really great start, had a really great run, and then uh, ended up being an overtime game, though. So I'll probably say just playing all four quarters and um, me making sure I'm doing my job as well. So that's that's probably one thing I can say. Okay, yeah, I think finishing game, but we we improve. Uh, yeah, yeah, we improve yeah. a lot on closing out the games and finishing up the games because against Thailand and against Philippines, we were down a couple of times, but the players didn't quit. And no, you know, you know. And how how about the mentality of the team? Though, how much you like it? Uh, how they finish team? Uh, how they finish game? And they they're not like folding up when they're down. Uh, I love it just because mm-hmm. it shows that um they really don't care who's in front of them. Mm-hmm. You know, at the same time, like you have to respect your opponents, but mm-hmm. uh you can't really um just think of them as as anything other than you know your opponent. So I feel like uh. The heart and, like I said earlier, the intensity that we play with is um, it's just amazing. So I'm glad I got you know the teammates that I have. Okay, that's enough about basketball, man. So how was how was Bali, man? I know you spent a couple of days in Bali for your uh, off days. Uh, what what was your first impression of Bali? First impression, um, I mean, obviously I couldn't wait to get to it because mm-hmm. I hear so much about it. But um, and for it to be so close to Jakarta, mm-hmm. I had never spent enough time there. So. It was fun. It was amazing. I mean, the people were super nice. Uh, the weather was great. It's like, it's like a place I've never been. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to going back uh, sometime, sometime in the future. What do you like the most though about Bali? Did you go to the beaches and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, um, huh? What do I like? The, <laughs> just how peaceful it was. Honestly, um, I feel like. It's a lot to do. Obviously, in Bali, you got like you know, you got your nightlife, then you got your your forests and everything. But 
just how peaceful it is, like walking on the beach, listening to the waves, um, how clear the water is. I mean, it's, I feel like uh, it's a place that kind of forces you to just calm down. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really like, like, how can I say it, like the peacefulness of, of Bali. I know. I want to move there, too. <laughs> I like the peacefulness too in Bali. But your boy, Jason Tatum, going to the NBA Finals. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, are you going with them? For the to win the NBA championship? No, of course. I mean, um, just playing against Jason uh, mm -hmm. growing up when we were younger and then playing for the year that mm -hmm. I did with him in college, uh, it's just amazing to really see it. Like, just the, the player and person that he's turning into. I mean, you obviously had an idea, like, you already knew, like, where it was going, but the fact that, you know, both 24 years old and to see him, like, doing legendary mm -hmm. things right now, I'm just, I'm super happy for him. So are you playing for the Celtics or not? Okay, no, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So Celtics in what? How many games? Uh, how many games? I mean, they got one of the greatest shooters ever on the other side. Yeah. So I say I say Celtics in six. Okay, I got Celtics in seven. Seven? Yeah, I got Celtics. Okay, that's cool. Um, one last one. What you play for a legendary coach, Coach K uh, at Duke? What was the biggest advice that you ever got from Coach K that you still hold on till today? Um, hmm. Hmm. just be who you are every day. Hmm. And what I mean by that is um, just be as consistent as you can be hmm. because uh, nobody really likes to work with up and down hmm. people. Nobody wants to really wonder what they're going to get out of you one day and whatnot. Hmm. So no matter how you're feeling or no matter, you know, what's going on in your personal life or whatever, when it comes to your profession, hmm. you have to be like, who you are every day or like be who they expect you to be because um once the inconsistency comes in it can lead to like you know bad things so yeah just stay consistent okay last thing what do you want to say to the all the indonesian basketball fans uh thank you for supporting us um and we need anyone who can to come out to the FIBA Asia cup in jakarta um you know we're really excited to play in front of you guys so you know thank you for supporting us Yes, sir. Marquis, once again, appreciate the time. Yes, Thank you sir. so much for taking the time doing Thank this you. interview. And yeah, man, we got the gold medal <laughs> with this guy. So we are now looking forward for him to help us going to the FIBA World Cup. Obviously, they need to uh, finish top eight in the FIBA Asia. So let's go to Sanayan and support our national team. And hopefully they will make it. And once again, Marquis, all the best. Thank you, uh, thank you for... But, uh, playing for Indonesia as well We really appreciate you And we're gonna support you All the way And yeah Don't forget to follow Marquis on uh, Instagram At Marquis <laughs> And yeah uh, We'll thank you guys for watching And we'll see you guys again Next video Peace out Yes sir Yes